All right, to continue, I've read the source code, so now I have a little better understanding of what's going on. Our lesson five draws the colored pyramid by evoking the draw colored pyramid method. So we'll go over to draw colored pyramid method and look at it. Now I've already determined that the apex of our pyramid are all the vertices that contain a 0x value, a 1y value, and a 0z value. So I'm going to create, well first I'll test it so you can see. I'm going to make that a 3 and save it. And if you notice, the vertex of that face changed. So I'm going to revert to 1. And I'm going to create a new variable, apex vertex y and I'm going to set it equal to 1. Notice that it's red right now. That means that the parser doesn't really recognize it. So when I save, also notice that this little orange triangle in the corner indicates that the editor has not been saved. So I'll save it, and it's going to say, aha, apex v vy is an unknown variable. So we're going to make it a method temporary variable, so it's local. We're going to declare a block local temp, temp variable, which shouldn't make any difference. Or we're going to make it an instance variable. Let's make it an instance variable. So remember it from call to call. And now we're going to go through, and we're going to place it wherever I believe the vertex should be, which is wherever there's a zero, one, zero pattern. And now to test this, let's make this a two or a four, so it'll be very visible. Save it. Aha! Uh -huh. We are correct. Save it back to one, or rather make it a zero, see if it flattens out. And no, it doesn't. I knew that already. So I'll make it a minus one, which I happen to know turns it into a flat pyramid. So when we want to change our minimum and maximum values, we want it centered around a minus one. So let's put it back at one. And there's our familiar pyramid again. Now let's go back to our slider. My slider mode. We've created it. It's sitting there, and it does nothing. So now we need to hook it up. So we'll go over here, and we will proceed to hook the slider up by saying, my slider morph target is my morph window. Now. Smalltalk has an interesting feature. It's called the cascade. If you put a semicolon after a message, then it says, send the next message to the same object. So we sent target my morph window to my slider morph. Now we are going to say action selector. and make sure we know exactly what spelling there is for that variable that we have not actually set yet. So now we're going to create a variable to make the action selector. So we are now going to create a method on the fly. We're going to call it set apex vertex y y val and normally we put a comment up here but you will see that small small talk methods are often self -com commenting so we'll go apex vy equals y We 
already created that instance variable, apex vy, so it's going to recognize it. We save it, and now we have a set apex vy. So let's test it before we make it our action selector. So we go my morph window, set apex vy colon, the name of the method is actually including the colon, and then we're going to say 3 and do it. Nothing happened. And that is because we forgot to delete the hardwired value. So we delete the hardwired value, save it again, and set it again, and there we go. Uh, remember we decided that the middle value, the flat value, was a negative one. So we are going to first use the selector. When we pass the selector as an argument to a method, we use the hash mark, which signifies that it is a symbol in the symbol table. And now we add another semicolon because we are not done yet. We are going to... Oh yes, we are done yet. So we add a period. And if I got my syntax right, my slider morph is now going to have a target, my morph window, and the action selector is going to be set apex vy. And it didn't complain. We can actually open up an inspector, inspector morph, and see inspector morph. This is all the values of this object we just created it from. Self, it's a simple slider morph. The bounds are where it is. It's 498 by 201 pixels down, and the other corner is 514 by 301, and so on. The color is currently light gray. The value is currently zero. The target is OpenGF Morph Tutorial, which happen, which is probably this one. We can actually check that if we want. And the argument is nothing. set value selector is set apex vx. So now it's going to automatically change values from 0 to 1. You know it doesn't make sense to make it longer by going down. So there is a slider command. We'll go to find it simple slider morph and it says accessing no descending string numeric value toggle descending all right descending equals self descending not in other words it inverts it so we want it instead of going up, we want it to go down as it goes to its zero. So my slider morph toggle descending, which reverses the order that it's currently going in. We do it, and now it goes up when we go up, and it goes down when we go down. But remember, we wanted it to actually be in the center. So we'll set the minute value, my slider min val of minus 2 my slider 
Morph, Max Val of plus three. And now it will range between minus two to plus three, where minus two will be the low value. Zero will be the Hmm, I have that backwards, don't I? Let's try that again. Let's make it minus three and two. And now, do it again. You can see how easy it is prototyping. When it's in the center, it's flat. When it's at the bottom, it's at the maximum negative value. When it's at the top, it's the maximum positive value. And I think we're done.